Yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this exciting webinar series from Nobly Vest with our friend Dimitri, who's going to talk about self-directed IRAs and solo 401ks. So before we get into this, just a quick disclaimer. The following content is only for informational purposes and is of a general nature. The information shared, conveyed, and elucidated in this presentation is not intended to constitute any legal, tax, accounting, or investment advice. Any strategies or ideas discussed herein should not be undertaken by any individual without prior consultation with a financial professional or independent research. So let's talk a little bit about your host, Snobly Vest. I am Margaret Kozlark. I have personally invested as an LP in over 1900 doors, mainly in the Southeast, a little bit of the Midwest and Texas. And I also hold a residential real estate license with Keller Williams. And my esteemed partner, Christine Shu, is also here. Christine owns six rental properties in Philadelphia and Westchester, New York. And she's also been a JV and an LP on multiple syndications in Texas, the Carolinas, Georgia and Florida. And together, as Nobly Vest, we have $32 million in assets under management. It's about 2,200 units, and we've had six properties go full cycle. And now to introduce our speaker, Dmitry Fomachenko is the president of Sense Financial, with this is a boutique financial firm specializing in self directed retirement accounts with checkbook control. He began his career in financial planning in 2000, but he's also an investor as well. So hopefully, Dimitri, you'll share with us a little bit about your experience with that. And like me, he is a licensed real estate broker in California. So Dimitri, we are so excited to have you on board to talk about your presentation. And I am going to send it over to you. So thank you for being here tonight. Yes, and I'm so sorry, before we begin with Dimitri, I just want to say if anyone has any questions or comments, please use the Q&A box, uh, put it in any time throughout, uh, throughout the presentation, and we'll definitely address them at the end. Um, and if you have any questions, even at the end, please do not be shy. We are here to have a discussion and make it interactive. So exactly. Now. And it should be obvious, this is a live presentation. This is not canned. So we are here ready to respond to anything that you may ask. So Absolutely. take it away, Dimitri. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, Christine and Margaret, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. It's uh, always exciting uh, to talk about this topic. So I'm going to uh, introduce to you the self-directed IRA and a solo 401k and just give you a brief overview of how they work. Uh, just uh, to begin that uh, basically our goal as a company is to help our clients obtain control over the retirement accounts and protect those retirement accounts. Proverbs 21.5 says that good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. And uh, I know that all of you work hard for your money. And um, I want you to have uh, or get to the situation where your money can work hard for you so that eventually you can uh, enjoy passive income. Uh, I'd like to begin by giving an example of one of our clients, and we call it a, a IRA or 401k makeover because I'd like you to pay attention to what uh, Jason, one of our clients, uh, had before he came to us. Uh, it's actually it's uh, been uh, quite a few number of years ago, but it's a good example. So I think some of you can relate to this. Basically, uh, Jason he had uh, an IRA and a 401k value at about $135,000. He actually was losing money in the stock market. He was looking at his statements every month and he was watching the, the balances go down because again, at that time, the stock market wasn't doing well. And he was concerned about because of the just uh, increased uh, government debt. And uh, there been a talk about the uh, government potentially coming in and tapping into private retirement accounts. So he was concerned about that. He was looking for ways to mitigate that risk. And he found us online, uh, contacted us, and uh, we were able to set up a self-directed solo 401k plan for Jason. And he made several investments with his money. So he moved over his IRA in a 401k and invested in uh, uh, rental property inside of his 401k. So this rental is owned by his 401k. So 401k actually receives 
uh, rental income, all tax deferred. Uh, then he took a portion and he invested in his brother's private business. His brother was a serial uh, entrepreneur and actually started successfully several businesses. And that was his next venture. So he invested in that. And then uh, the rest of the money he actually used uh, uh, his 401k as a bank and he invested in a real estate note. It's a great way to uh, create passive uh, income stream as well. So his uh, 401k actually uh, a lender to another investor who purchased the property and uh, 401k acted as a lender. So he receives a monthly interest income on that property. Combined, he's getting about $1,000 a month in cash flow. Uh, so as you can see, his uh, uh, portfolio, his retirement portfolio actually growing every single month with uh, those uh, uh, payments that he receives, the, uh, the rental payment and the interest payment. And uh, also his investments are appreciating uh, and going up in value over the years. So very different situation than the stock market. And uh, unfortunately, uh, with the stock market is that uh, if if you invest in a stock market and that's the only thing that, that you're investing in, it's like having everything in a single basket. But uh, the other thing that you uh, need to keep uh, in mind is that you and I, we cannot control the stock market. Um, we, we hope it, it can go well, but as we've seen from the history, actually, it doesn't just go up all the time. There are significant drops at times. And so uh, when you invest in alternative assets, you can actually mitigate that risk because you can choose investments that you have much greater control that provide better opportunities for growth and actually with smaller risk. Now let's talk about the options that are available uh, to you uh, when it comes to self-directing. Well, the, the first is a self-directed IRA. Uh, and, and I'll go over in details of, for each one of those in the next few slides. Uh, then there is a checkbook IRA, the uh, IRA that gives you quote unquote checkbook control. And there is also a solo 401k, which is known as the uh, ultimate retirement plan. Uh, again, I'll explain the differences and, and why one is better than other. Uh, there is also uh, uh, been talk out there about uh, plans that are uh, quote unquote known as a EQRP which uh, uh, actually this is th there is no such plan. Uh, EQRP is just a marketing term for a 401k. So just so that you don't know, that, that you know uh, there is no such plan. The IRS doesn't recognize uh, EQRP as a, as a plan. You cannot find it in the IRS code, but it's, it's just a marketing term for the 401k. Uh, so let's take a look at the conventional retirement account and compare that with a self-directed retirement account. Well, a conventional account is held by the custodian who allows you, as a custodian, uh, they have the power to dictate the investment choices for you. And uh, those choices are limited to stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Uh, here is an example uh, of uh, uh, a sheet. Uh, actually, when I used to work for a company 15 years ago or so, I had a 401k. And the representative from a 401k company will come in and meet with us about once a year and will give us a sheet similar to this one, giving us the investment choices. So once a year, we could actually change, uh, change our uh, investment choices, uh, how we invest our 401k money. Uh, and he will give us a sheet similar to this one. As you can see, just a handful of choices and all of them confined to the stock market. Well, when you switch to a self-directed, that means that uh, the custodian doesn't give you investment choices. You pick your own investment choices. And when it comes to IRS uh, guidance on this, IRS doesn't have a list of uh, allowed uh, transaction. When you see uh, terms such as uh, IRS approved investment, be careful of that because the IRS doesn't approve any investments. IRS actually gives you a list of the uh, prohibited transactions, things that you cannot do in your 401k. And again, I do have a slide on that. I'll explain uh, those things that are prohibited in your uh, IRA or 401k's investments. Uh, but uh, many uh, people who switch to self-directed, they invest in residential real estate, buying rental properties. They invest in tax liens and tax deeds. Uh, cryptocurrency been uh, popular 
uh, in the last few years, mortgage notes uh, and trust this. That's primarily what I'm personally doing with my retirement funds. I think it's again, and, and Jason and my example, he did that with portion of his uh, uh, 401k funds as well. You can actually invest in a business or a partnership and a private business that is not publicly traded because if there's a, a, a startup business or a company that is not publicly traded, you're simply unable to invest in that business using your normal IRA or a 401k because again they're not publicly traded so you do need uh, a self-directed uh, IRA or 401k for that uh, you can uh, um, like I said do uh, be a private lender and you can still do the same stocks and mutual funds again it's uh, um, often a misconception when uh, uh, people think that once you set up a self-directed IRA, you can only invest in real estate. <laughs> Again, uh, self-directed means that you pick your investments and there is uh, virtually limitless investment choices uh, available for you. So let's take a look at what is a self-directed IRA. Well, it is a tax deferred trust account that is held uh, by the IRS approved custodian. Uh, every IRA, uh, uh, requires to have a custodian and conventional custodians are uh, uh, Schwab, uh, Fidelity, Merrill Lynch, uh, even banks such as Wells Fargo. And again, those custodians, they basically present you with the investment options. But with the self-directed IRA, you have a custodian who don't uh, uh, offer any investments. They basically uh, uh, provide you with the platform to invest in pretty much anything you wish, um, as long as you follow IRS rules. Majority of people not even aware that uh, they exist. And uh, people, uh, uh, I hear this uh, every so often that, uh, hey, my my financial advisor told me that it's uh, illegal actually to invest in uh, real estate uh, with an IRA. Well, and the reason you hear those comments is that number one uh, possible reason that uh, uh, that person that telling this is just simply ignorant and, and doesn't understand the rules or maybe they do understand the rules and simply do, they want you to stay with them uh, they want to scare you off uh, from doing something like that because uh, remember that your financial advisor by the way my background that's what i've done in the past i've been in a retirement uh, industry and i've been just selling mutual funds uh, to to my clients and uh, i got out of this uh, industry because those mutual funds, I, I could not control. My clients could not control. I could maybe uh, help them uh, diversify a little bit uh, to a certain degree because you can't really achieve a true diversification with uh, mutual funds. It's just uh, one asset class. Uh, so again, I could not control those investments. My client could not control those investments. And so, so I got out. Uh, but they've been around uh, since 1974, believe it or not. So uh, almost 50 years. Uh, and they uh, were created to benefit people like you and I to put money away for the retirement under Internal Revenue Code Section 408. So let's take a look at a quick uh, diagram how subject IRA actually works. Well, step number one is you've got to open uh, uh, a new account with the IRS approved custodian. Like I said, custodian is required for every IRA. Uh, step number two, you, you do qualified uh, uh, transfer of funds. You can uh, move that from another IRA or you can roll over funds from a, a 403B or 401K if you have a, a employer sponsored plan that is eligible for rollover. Well, at that point, uh, you as the account owner, you direct the custodian. So that's why it's a self-directed, but custodian is involved still. So you have to tell the custodian, you have to go through the custodian because they they have your money and you got to tell them what, what you want to do. So you, you can buy a property, you can uh, uh, invest in a, a paper asset such as a real estate note, you can invest in private business, uh, syndication, you name it. But uh, the disadvantage of this structure is that every time you do a transaction or every time you invest or, or sell an investment, there will be a fee that custodian charges because they're in business to make uh, uh, money. So that's how they make money by uh, charging transaction fees. And uh, it, it does work for some uh, who don't expect uh, many transactions. Uh, but uh, um, as, as the account grows uh, in value and more transactions are 
taking place, the more fees you're going to pay. So, uh, um, and uh, uh, for this reason, people actually looking for alternative ways. And that's what the checkbook IRA uh, comes in. Uh, checkbook IRA is also known as IRA LLC or IRA owned LLC because it's a, a special purpose LLC that is created. Uh, and it's created with the one purpose in mind uh, to be owned by the IRA. So IRA is actually the owner of the LLC. And you as the account uh, owner is, is the manager, designated manager of the LLC. As a manager of the LLC, you have full control over it. It does require IRS compliance setup and operating agreement. And uh, this structure allows you to bypass the custodian. Whereas in the previous slide, you've seen uh, that you have to do every transaction, every purchase, every you know expense that you pay for your rental property. You have to go through the custodian to do that. Well, checkbook IRA allows you to bypass that. Well, how does it actually look? Well, let's take a look at the diagram. Um, uh, similarly, uh, you do need uh, uh, an IRA account, new account with the IRS approved custodian that allows alternative investments. Um, again, you're going to have to fund it. And typically for an IRA, uh, because the annual contribution limit is pretty small, $6,000, uh, typically most people start or fund their self-directed IRA with uh, uh, movement of funds from another retirement account. And that's either IRA or employer-sponsored plans such as 401k or 403b. Well, next, that's what the difference is. The special purpose single member LLC is formed. Uh, this LLC, this is IRS compliant uh, structure uh, um, and it's set up uh, with you being a manager of the LLC. So as a manager, you control it. Then uh, as a manager, you can open uh, a bank account for the LLC and uh, instruct your custodian to buy units of the LLC. So actually IRA buys 100% of LLC units and the funds are moved from the, uh, from the IRA custodial account into the LLC checking account. Well, at that point, you as the LLC manager, you decide what you want to do. So you can buy investment property, you can invest in a, in a note or a trust deed, and you can do that as simple as writing a check. So no longer you have to go through a middleman, no longer you have to pay fees for those transactions, you can do it yourself. And like I said, it is as simple as writing a check. Uh, all of the transactions uh, taking place directly inside of an LLC and uh, all of the income and expenses are flowing from and back into the LLC checking account, not, not an IRA. So uh, you eliminate all the fees, the transaction and asset-based fees. Uh, you just pay an nominal fee to the custodian so that they can hold uh, an IRA for you and uh, uh, you have full control. So it's it's very convenient. Uh, saves you uh, money and uh, most importantly it's uh, uh, gives you a flexibility and uh, uh, convenience because uh, you don't have to go through a middleman now let's take a look at the solo 401k um, uh, again it's uh, known as the ultimate retirement plan and the reason for it uh, you'll see in the next slide when i show you the benefits but uh, it has been uh, created under internal revenue code section 401 and it's defined as a retirement savings trust. And it's designed uh, for those people who are self-employed or uh, own a small business. That's what the name a solo comes in. Although um, uh, it might be misleading, uh, solo means one, but uh, uh, it can actually cover more than one participant because a spouse of the business owner can also participate in this plan a partner of the business owner. If there are two partners or multiple partners, uh, those partners uh, can participate in the plan. Uh, we actually have a, uh, again, most of the time, it's just one participant. Uh, uh, often we see two participants, but uh, we do have a client with uh, four partners, actually a, a company with four partners, no employees, just four partners, and we have a solo 401k for them. Uh, but uh, it cannot accommodate uh, non-owner and non-spouse employees. Uh, they've been around uh, also uh, for quite some time, uh, not as long as IRAs, but since 2002, uh, when there uh, have been some changes in the tax law. And these laws, they actually 
made all these benefits possible. Uh, so let's take a look at them. But before actually we do that, let's talk about eligibility. Uh, who is it for? Because it is not for everyone. A solo 401k uh, eligibility, you must uh, meet two criteria. Number one, you have to have a presence of legitimate self-employment activity. Now, the activity can be in any form. Um, and, uh, um, oops, uh, okay. So just to give you some examples uh, of the activity, it can be somebody who just uh, doing consulting on the side. Maybe they have a full-time job uh, as an employee working for another company. They doing just some side things. You can do that. Uh, you can have somebody who's a real estate agent. Again, can be doing that on the side or maybe they are full-time in real estate. Uh, somebody who doing IT consulting or somebody who is doing uh, 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 maybe um, in medical field. I have uh, nurses working. Uh, they do have a job again and they work for a hospital uh, on the side as a 1099 uh, contractor. So they will qualify. So again, it, it can be in any form or shape. And number two, the absence of full-time employees. So essentially you cannot have any full-time employees working uh, for you more than a thousand hours. Uh, if it's a short term or if it's a long term uh, part-time employees, that number is dropped to 500 hours a year. So essentially uh, having a business fit full-time employees is the only thing that could disqualify you from a 401k because if you're not self-employed, if you don't own a business, uh, you can easily start one. Again, it doesn't have to be full-time, uh, but it has to be legitimate. So how does it work? Well, solo 401k plan, uh, you need to have a plan sponsor. And uh, that can be a sole proprietor, uh, can be a corporation, uh, LLC or a partnership. Uh, note that you don't have to have an entity to do this. You don't have to have a S corp or C corp, LLC, you can be just a sole proprietor doing business under your own name, under your own social security number, and you will qualify because sole proprietorship is a legal uh, business type that uh, makes you eligible. Uh, then a plan a sponsor adopts the 401k plan and plan and trust are created. Now with the solo 401k trust is used as the, as the uh, 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 funding mechanism. So uh, trust is actually holding the assets of the plan and you're designated trustee, similar to the uh, IRA LLC structure where you as a manager control it. Here as a trustee, uh, you have full control over the 401k trust. Uh, again, as a trustee, you will open a bank account at uh, a bank or any other financial institution, brokerage, uh, credit union. And then as a trustee, you decide what you're gonna invest in. You can buy a property, you can invest in a, a multifamily syndication and become a limited partner there, or actually your 401k trust will be the partner, will be the investor, will take the title to the investment. And all of the income and expenses, again, flowing from and back into the trust bank account that you control. So very simple structure, no transaction fees, no asset-based fees, uh, very simple to maintain. Now let's talk about the benefits. A solo 401k, actually many people set this up just uh, to avoid the tax liability because if you are self-employed or a business owner, um, uh, you, you may be familiar with the concept of a cash flow quadrant uh, by Robert Kiyosaki. You know, the, uh, the, the book, famous book that he wrote. If you have not heard about this concept, look that up, read the book. But basically, there are four ways to make money. You can be on the left side, be an employee or self-employed, or you can be on the right side, uh, owning a business, a system that generates income for you or being an investor. So if you're self-employed or, or a business owner, that's what required to qualify for this plan, then um, you have much higher potential for income. To, to increase your income, because if you if you work smart, if you're successful, you can make a lot more money, because you're not limited by your salary or uh, um, hourly uh, uh, income that you receive from your job. Uh, now, more income you make, more taxes you're gonna pay. That's a very common uh, uh, problem that uh, many self-employed people who are successful dealing with. 
Well, Solo 401k allows you to contribute up to $67,000 for this year. And these contributions are tax deductible. Now think about this. If you're in business with your spouse, you can double that. So what if you, if you're again, successful in your business and you're able to maximize that, you can potentially put 120 plus thousand dollars in, in this vehicle every single year. So if you're, if you put uh, again, as a family, 120 grand into a retirement account, I mean, think about the, the net effect. You're going to drop your taxable income by 120,000, uh, which might drop you a couple of brackets down, you know, as far as the tax bracket. So again, in a, in a much smaller tax bracket, and you're going to be paying on a significantly lower amount because, you know, instead of uh, income being X, your income is now X minus 120,000 or whatever amount you decide to contribute. Uh, so it's it can uh, uh, save you uh, on taxes significantly. Uh, now, it also allows you to borrow from your 401k. So there is a loan feature, which is not available with IRAs. You cannot borrow from an IRA, but with 401k, each participant actually can take up to $50,000 or 50% of the balance, whichever is less. And this can be taken for any reason. Uh, it also allows you to take... Uh, uh, to make rot contributions. And unlike an IRA, where uh, contributions are income uh, 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 may be restricted or limited based on your income, within a 401k, rot contributions are not dependent on your income. So you can make contributions regardless of your income. Uh, it uh, uh, gives you checkbook control and very cost-effective administration because you don't need a custodian, you don't need the uh, uh, LLC uh, to get the checkbook control, uh, and it allows your spouse to participate. Uh, so essentially, you can double the benefits without any, any cost uh, to do so. And uh, uh, last but not least is uh, exemption from UDFI, which is, stands for Unrelated uh, Debt Finance Income. And uh, this income is derived from a property uh, an investment property that is purchased in an IRA, for example, uh, comparing that with an IRA, if you buy a property using leverage in an IRA, you uh, that portion of the income will be subject to unrelated business income tax or UBIT. Well, 401k is exempt from uh, taxes on UDFI. So another reason to use this vehicle uh, and invest in real estate. Uh, and again, it allows you to have true diversification because if you just invest in the stock market, uh, create, by the way, goes to my daughter or this when she was six or seven, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so a man holding a basket and bottom fell off and all the eggs are gone, broken. And wife says, well, I thought our investments were diversified. Well, if you're just in the mutual funds or just in stocks and, and maybe, maybe have different bunch of stocks there, well, guess what? You don't have true diversification because just you, you're just in, still in one basket. It's one asset class. So to be able to have multiple baskets, you do need to have a self-directed IRA where you can truly diversify. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, divide your portion to seven or even to eight for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. Isn't that true? I mean, look at just last couple of years. With uh, COVID and all the that's been happening, and not just in our country, but around the world. I mean, uh, who could have predict that? It was just completely unpredictable. But, uh, and I, I'm talking to our clients uh, every week who are just sharing with me stories about their IRA being depleted, their 401k losing uh, nearly 50% in value because of the a stock market uh, crash, uh, depending again, how they were invested. And uh, I'm telling them, hey, my portfolio just continued to grow this year because I invest in assets that, that are not uh, dependent on the, on the market. Uh, and uh, uh, my assets are, they're producing passive income, regardless what what's happening in the economy. Uh, so um, again, that should be the goal for each and every one of, of us investors to, to diversify. Um, just a few options. So you can use uh, self-directed means 
unlimited investment choices. You can invest in precious metals, residential real estate, uh, commercial real estate. You can be the lender, use your 401k as a bank, invest in trust deeds, private businesses, tax liens, you name it. Again, there's really, a, uh, uh, th there's only actually a couple of limitations what you cannot invest in. And that's where we come into the Internal Revenue Code for Section 4975 on prohibited transaction rules. And this section explains that uh, using your IRA, uh, uh, you cannot invest in life insurance contracts and collectibles. Uh, with 401k, it's only collectibles. And uh, uh, the retirement plan also cannot invest in an S corporation because uh, with the S corporation trust cannot be uh, uh, a shareholder. Now, if you if you own an S corporation, this is uh, uh, also a misunderstanding that many people uh, uh, don't uh, correctly get. If you own an S corporation, you can set up a 401k. You just cannot invest your 401k money into somebody else's S uh, corporation. It can be C corp, not the S corp. Uh, so those are the only uh, prohibited investments. Now, uh, on top of that, there is also uh, 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 you can uh, 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 prohibit the transaction may occur when there is a disqualified person it gets involved in a transaction with a qualified plan. And disqualified person is basically uh, somebody who is uh, the, the owner of the IRA or 401k and uh, their immediate family members, which is uh, ascendants, uh, ancestors, uh, parents, grandparents, and lineal descendants a son or daughter, uh, grandkids, and their spouses. Also investment advisor or, or those who are fiduciaries providing services to the plan. And uh, also any business entity in which any of the following persons has 50% or greater interest. So as you can see, this is pretty narrow list and the easy way to understand that is a vertical line. So uh, you can actually go sideways. Your 401k can engage in a business transaction with your uh, sibling or your aunt or uncle or nephew, just not your uh, uh, immediate family members who are in the vertical line. Uh, so let's take a look at those transactions. Uh, uh, IRS defines them. This is a language from the IRS uh, uh, website, actually. So it's uh, any sale, exchange, or leasing of any property between a plan and a disqualified person. Example of that can be you buy a, a property a vacation rental in your 401k. And uh, uh, you cannot actually go and stay in that property yourself. You cannot uh, uh, lease it or rent it to your uh, children or your parents, uh, whether they pay market rent or not, because they, they will be using the property that's prohibited. Uh, lending of money or uh, other extension of credit between a plan and disqualified person. For this reason, when you buy in a property or uh, like a rental in your 401k, the loan must be non-recourse because you as a disqualified person not allowed to extend the credit uh, to the 401k. And, and non-recourse means uh, there is no personal guarantee. Uh, next one is providing any goods or services or facilities between a plan and disqualified person. Example of that can be if you're a real estate agent, uh, as an example, again, you buying a, a property in the 401k, you cannot be the agent uh, for that transaction. The, uh, the, there might be an unrelated third party who actually uh, handles the transaction. Uh, transfer to or uh, use by or for the benefit of a disqualified person of income or assets of the plan. So uh, even though you control the the bank account, you control the trust or you control the LLC, uh, all the income must go directly into the uh, into the uh, plan's account. You cannot touch any of that. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to an IRA or 401k. Violation of that will uh, result in a prohibited transaction, which will disqualify your plan. Uh, any act by a disqualified person who is fiduciary where he deals with income or assets of a plan for your own or his own interest. Again, you personally cannot benefit. It's for the benefit, you, you're controlling it, but you cannot benefit from the 
uh, IRA or 401k investments. And then uh, uh, receiving any consideration for your own personal account by any disqualified person. Remember the, the vertical line, uh, immediate family members, uh, uh, who's a fiduciary from any party dealing with the plan in connection with a transaction involving the income or assets of the plan. And uh, uh, to summarize this, the easiest way to understand this is, uh, again, remembering uh, pretty much all prohibited transactions occur when disqualified person is involved in the transaction. So for this reason, you want to make sure the transactions are arm's length, meaning that there is no involvement of a disqualified person, uh, either directly or indirectly, because there can be indirect prohibited transaction. If you can trace to a disqualified person uh, somehow in this transaction, then that will become prohibited transaction. So again, you want to make sure it's a arm's length transaction. A uh, question that I often get asked is, do I have to just pay cash to buy the property? Uh, uh, no, you, you don't have to. I do have a slide on that. But buying real estate inside of an IRA is pretty straightforward because all of the gains uh, are deferred from taxes. Inside of a RAT, they're going to be tax-free. Uh, so you uh, again, you pay taxes at the future date rather than in the year when you make the investment or realize that gain. And by doing so, you can actually grow your account much faster. Um, and um, all of the income must go back to the IRA and all of the expenses must be paid from the account. Uh, so yes, you can finance. You just cannot provide a personal guarantee. The loan must be non-recourse. Uh, property is the only security for the loan. Typically, the lender will require 30 to 50% down payment. And the property must provide sufficient cash flow to pay for all the expenses and, and have uh, um, some cash left over. Uh, the lender will also require that you have some reserves in the 401k or an IRA. If you're using an IRA, it will trigger UDFI, uh, which is a taxable income. And there's only a handful of banks or lenders that offer this kind of loan. So you can get that at, at your community bank or any major banks. You need to work with uh, a special lender. We actually have a list of those lenders on our website uh, who uh, provide uh, financing for IRAs and 401ks. Uh, just a quick comparison of all the three options here. So I pulled everything together. As you can see, all of them allow you to invest in alternative investments. You do need a custodian for an IRA. You don't need one for a 401k. So you remove the middleman completely. Uh, you do get a checkbook control with uh, IRA LLC or a checkbook IRA and with the solo 401k as well. Uh, there is no transaction fees with the IRA LLC or solo 401k, but with the custodial self-directed IRA, there are fees for every transaction. Uh, with the IRA LLC or a checkbook IRA, yeah, there is actually can be additional fees for the LLC because uh, a state may uh, assess certain fees for having the LLC in that state. That's paid directly to the state and this is just the cost of doing business in that state. Uh, you can get a loan only from the 401k, not an IRA. And uh, uh, 401k is exempt from uh, taxes on leveraged real estate. As you can see, the contribution limit is significantly higher with the 401k, 10 times higher almost. Uh, and with the solo 401k, you can have a rod component. Uh, but again, it's not for everyone. You do need to be self-employed or own a business to qualify uh, for it. So hopefully this gives you a good, uh, uh, just a, a summary and to, to make, a, to make a, a judgment. I think uh, by now you can pretty, pretty clearly see which option might be a good fit for you. Uh, now, uh, we have limited time today, so I kind of was flying through the through the slides and, and I didn't even cover everything. So, and everyone's situation is different. So I, I would like to offer every uh, participant uh, an opportunity to speak with me one-on-one -on -one, and you can uh, just go to uh, our website, actually. If you just go to sensefinancial.com, there is a link on the front page that will take you to my calendar and you can see my availability in real time and you can just block a 15 minute slot 
uh, to speak with me and then we can go over your specific situation uh, answer your questions and uh, uh, help you uh, make a decision again it's completely complimentary no consultation i'm passionate about what i'm doing and i want to help you i want to help you grow your retirement wealth uh, I believe we uh, have uh, a few questions there and uh, I'm going to turn it back to uh, Christine um, who will, uh, yes. uh, and I'm, I'm happy to answer the questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dimitri. That was a lot of great content there um, and information about self-directed retirement accounts. So really appreciate that. Uh, yes. Yeah, so now we are going to open the floor for uh, some Q and A, and we do have a couple questions, a few questions actually in the Q and A box. So thank you for for putting your questions there. And if, if any more come to you, please do put it in the box. So our first question comes from Dave. Uh, can you only contribute the money you make in your business to a solo four hundred one k, or can you also contribute W two income? A uh, good question. Yeah. So um, you can only contribute self-employment income to a solo 401k because solo 401k is set up for your uh, uh, for your business, for your side business. So you, you can only use that income. The same way, if you have a 401k at your job, you can only make contributions to your 401k at your job only from, from your paycheck. You can't use your side income uh, uh, to contribute to a 401k. Because it's it's a it's a plan specific. The plan is uh, 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 yeah, so again um, only sol uh, solo 401k income will will accept uh, contribution from the self employment income. Awesome, thank you. All right, so our next question from Janelle: uh, If you're deferring taxes, aren't you just causing yourself a higher tax bill uh, sometime in the future? What's the benefit of deferring those taxes? Well, uh, this is a, a, you know, maybe you can, uh, I, I'm going to give you an answer, but it's, uh, uh, if you're asking this, I think you should spend a little bit more time actually to understanding this concept and, and maybe spending more time with your CPA or just, you know, reading some, uh, some uh, material online there. But the concept is this, by deferring your taxes, you're actually reducing your tax liability today. And uh, uh, you can uh, invest, when you invest retirement funds, you're not being taxed on the earnings. Uh, your uh, all the income that you generate deferred from taxes. So you can actually grow uh, to much larger amount. Yes, you're still gonna have to pay taxes on the uh, distributions uh, eventually when you take them out, but you're gonna have much larger amount because if, if you compare, and there is actually some uh, material, again, if you do you know, quick uh, Google search, you will probably find some uh, illustrations there, some graphics that actually show you the numbers. I just don't have that slide available. But uh, again, if you, let's say, depending on your tax bracket, there, there's a number of factors involved. But if, you're, if you start with $100,000, for example, of taxable money, and if you invest that and you make uh, let's say ten thousand dollars. Well, if you're in thirty percent tax bracket, you actually only end up with seven, not ten, because you have to pay thirty percent on that uh, income. Well, guess what? If you do it inside of a solo four hundred one k, you've got the entire ten thousand available to you. So if you reinvest that and 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 you do it year over year and and you multiply that by it's it's compounding effect. So you're going to have a significantly larger amount at the end. So yes, it's going to be taxable, but it's going to be significantly uh, larger. But let me actually comment, uh, uh, you know, just give you a little bit more, <laughs> a bonus info here. Uh, I'm not a CPA uh, and taxes is not my expertise, but uh, the, uh, I, you know, I, I deal with this. I, I'm an investor myself and um, you know, one thing that that I learned is actually, you know, there is legal ways not to pay taxes. So you can have income and you can actually shelter that income from taxes. And, and one of the ways that I'm personally doing that is by investing in syndications. And and I just been blown away with the tax benefits that they that that they offer and ability for me to 
shelter my income from taxes. I, I paid almost no taxes uh, last couple of years, just all because of the, the benefits investing in multiple syndications over the years and you know compounding effect of that. So again, if you invest in real estate, you can you you may have uh, retirement assets in the future when you retire at 60, 65 and you take the distribution, normally it will be taxable. But if you do have real estate to offset that, you may not even have to pay taxes on that. But again, that's a, a conversation for you to have with your CPA and, and for you to educate yourself on this uh, subject. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, definitely a good idea if you don't already have one. Have a really awesome CPA that is well-versed in tax strategies in real estate because there are so many amazing things that you can do uh, to help mitigate some of those tax burdens. So thank you for that. Um, all right, so we've got another question here. What can you say about self-directed HSAs? Well, good HSA question. is a health savings account. It's not a retirement account. And uh, uh, I don't deal with uh, HSA, so this is not the the area of my expertise, although I can tell you that they do exist. Uh, I think HSA is a great tool. Uh, I have one and I maximize one. And uh, uh, actually, it's, it's important to understand how they work. And uh, when I first started one, I did not understand how it works. So I actually, I mean, you make contributions that are tax deductible, but then I was taking those contributions to pay for medical expenses in, in the first year I did that. But the whole point of using an HSA is that you want to you wanna leave it there. You want it to grow tax deferred because all the disqualified distributions will be tax-free. It's, like it's like another Roth account, Roth IRA account. Because I think now you can put uh, over $7,000 a year uh, in, in contributions for you and your spouse. Uh, they're, they're great tools. And uh, uh, again, you just want to, you want it to grow over the years and then just keep your uh, uh, um, records of all the exp medical expenses that you've been incurring. It doesn't matter. You can go back 20 years and you can actually uh, uh, reclaim those expenses and take uh, tax-free distributions. But uh, um, uh, because of the uh, because there is a limited amount that you can put in an HSA in a year, only you know thirty five hundred, I think, for individual and seven something for a family. It, it takes a while to grow this. So in uh, in many cases, it doesn't make sense to self direct the HSA because of the smaller amount. So I personally have HSA, but I don't self-direct that. I just invest it in mutual funds. Uh, I I use uh, Vanguard, uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Total stock market Vanguard for the most part. I have a couple other funds. And, and this way I don't have to worry about this. It gives me again, a little bit of an exposure to the market uh, and long-term it will do well, well over 10%. But yeah, the, I there are, self-directed HSAs that do exist. If you have uh, a decent balance, uh, you probably can find self-directed HSA and, and do something with it. Yeah, so to follow up that, um, this is the reason I asked is that HSAs can also be used in real estate transactions for tax advantages. Um, is, that, is that a true statement? Uh, well, again, HSA is uh, uh, you 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 make contribution to an HSA, and that contribution is tax deductible. Now, what takes place inside of an HSA doesn't doesn't affect you personally, so there is no tax advantages to you personally from the investments that you make inside of an HSA. The contributions are deductible, but once you make a contribution, the same thing with uh, with an IRA. You contribute to an IRA, you buy a piece of property in an IRA, it doesn't affect you personally because it's not your property. You don't own it. Your IRA owns it. It doesn't affect you. So I'm, I'm not sure if I fully understand your question, but again, what takes place inside of an HSA or an IRA doesn't affect you personally because it's not your investment. Okay. Thank um, you. I have a question for you, Dimitri. And, and by the way, for the person who asked the question, I would definitely encourage you to set up a consultation with Dimitri and you could probably talk about that and 
and any other questions you have. And there's our contact info, by the way, he's there at the bottom. So my question is, if someone um, sets up a checkbook IRA while they have a W-2 job, and then they later leave that job and become self-employed, are there benefits to switching that over to a, four, uh, to a solo 401k? Well, uh, uh, I'm going to show you back to the slide that I that I covered the the side by side comparison. Uh, solo 401k definitely has several advantages over an IRA. So even if you started with an IRA to begin with, you certainly can switch to a solo 401k. And yes, you can benefit. For example, if you're uh, if you start a checkbook IRA and and purchase the property with it and you finance that purchase, you pay in UBIT tax on, on portion of that income. Well, two years later, you become self-employed, or maybe you still keep in your job, but you're now doing some kind of a side hassle, and, and you have ability to qualify for a solo 401k. Well, guess what? You can set up a solo 401k. You can do in-kind rollover, meaning that you, you're you not moving the cash. you actually move in that investment that property that asset from an IRA to a 401k and you now get got rid of the UBIT tax this was just okay. one and that's benefit. something that you could help people do right yeah yeah we, we've done a number of those actually I have a number of clients who've been exactly in the same situation they started with the checkbook IRA and then later they uh, they switched well <laughs> I, I do have clients actually who who've done it the other way around who, who started uh uh, uh, solo 401k, but then their business grown and they no longer qualify for a solo 401k because they have full-time employees. Well, they switch to a checkbook IRA. So you can actually do that. There, is, uh, there are strategies and, and uh, there are ways to, to make it work for you. Okay. But can great you, question, Margaret. Great. Yeah. Can you um, elaborate a little bit on what a U, UBIT, uh, UBIT tax is? Yeah, so the, the UBIT is uh, stands for unrelated business income tax. And this tax was uh, a place just to make the plain field level for everyone. So let me give you an example. Let's say, Christine, you're, you're, you're a flipper, you flip properties, right, and in your neighborhood. So you, you go out, you find distressed property, you fix that up, and you sold it, and you you made $100,000 on that property in, in a few months. But at the same time, there is a nonprofit in your town, a church, right? Church is a nonprofit tax exempt organization. And they do the same thing. They decide to flip properties again. Now, would it be fair that you pay the taxes on, on that $100,000 and they do the same thing and they're not paid, paying taxes? No, it will not be fair because church is not the, the, the reason that they're tax exempt, not because they're flipping properties, but because of other activities. So yeah. all the donations that they receive, that uh, income for them will be will not be taxable. But mm -hmm. if the uh, if the uh, tax exempt organization and, and IRA and 401k, they consider it tax exempt uh, entities. So if a tax exempt organization, any tax exempt organization engages in an activity that is outside of their normal business, then that's when the UBIT tax kicks in. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, you, when you flip a property inside of 401k or an IRA, that is considered trade or business or maybe considered trade or business stuck to your CPA. You know, mm -hmm. flipping one might be okay, but flipping 10 definitely is a business. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, uh, when uh, for an IRA specifically, if you buy a property using leverage, so if you're buying a property for $100,000 and you're using leverage uh, to do that, so you put $50,000 down and then you get a loan for $50,000. The 50000 to buy this property is not your IRA's money. You actually have to borrow it. So mm -hmm. the IRS considers that 50% of the income will be subject to UBIT because it's, it's unrelated debt finance income now, UDFI. Mm -hmm. And UDFI is subject to UBIT. And 401k, by the way, is exempt from that taxation on leveraged real estate. So it only applies for an IRA. Right. Now, if, you're, if you have a business income, in an IRA or 401k, regardless, 
there will be UBIT tax, but mm -hmm. IRA specifically will also be taxed on leveraged, uh, uh, non-income from leveraged real estate. Got it. Thank you for that. Well, we are officially out of time. So we just want to say thank you for joining us. Um, on the screen here, we have our contact information uh, for both Christine, uh, myself, Christine, Margaret, and also Dimitri. So please be sure to reach out. And also, if you're not already on our investor club list, uh, please do join us. We do have access to upcoming deals through that uh, investor club and also a lot of educational materials going out on several different topics around investing, around finances and syndications. So please do sign up on the website and book a call with us. Uh, there are other deals that you can have access to in addition. Um, if you do book a call with us, those are the 506B, the Bravo deals, uh, where we are required to have a pre-existing relationship with you. So if you like to you know, have access to those deals, please do reach out to us. And uh, with that, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dimitri, for uh, really an amazing time and amazing topic so thank you for educating us and we'll be doing this every month so please stay tuned uh, through our newsletters we will be announcing uh, our next topic for October so well, with that thank you thank so you much just for uh, having me it's been fun I enjoyed uh, the time and great questions yes we've learned a lot Dimitri thank you and thanks everybody for joining us yeah thank you have a great night everyone take care